The ratings are in for Saturday's edition of AW Collision as well as AW Rampage on TNT. AW All Out not only changes date but also the day as well. Julia has suffered an injury in her first match for Marigold, possibly delaying her upcoming WWE debut. Plus, Cody Rhodes versus Logan Paul was it ever considered to be title versus title? Hey guys, welcome back to Wrestling News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of professional wrestling. Let's start off talking about the ratings for this past weekend's editions of AEW Collision, as well as AEW Rampage, and some positive news for All Elite Wrestling, because Saturday night's episode of AEW Collision averaged 523,000 viewers on TNT, which is up 38.4% from the previous week. It's the second largest audience total the show has done thus far in 2024. Collision drew a 0.15 rating in the 18-49 key demographic. That's up 25% from last week and ties the second highest rating Collision has drawn in that category this year. There was one NBA playoff game as competition on Saturday night, in addition to an NHL playoff game. Now, when it comes to AEW Rampage, we've also got the ratings for that, which immediately followed Collision on TNT. AEW Rampage, which immediately followed Collision on the same network, averaged 391,000 viewers. Now, that is up 14.3% from the previous week and is also the second largest viewership the show has done since March 20. Rampage drew a 0.13 rating in the 18-49 demographic, which is also up 18.2% from last week. It ties Rampage's third highest rating in that category since February 19. Now, when it comes to the quarter hour ratings, these come courtesy of WrestleNomics, so shout out to them. Be sure to subscribe to their Patreon service. We can get that up on the screen right there. Not only do you see the quarter hour ratings of Collision, but also AW Rampage as well. Now, as compared to the same week in 2023, when the show aired on a Friday afternoon, Rampage's overall audience was up 33.5%, while its 18 to 49 rating was up 44.4%. It's the fifth straight week the show has been up year over year in the key demographic, although Rampage has been airing in a more favorable time slot with a wrestling lead in this year. As I mentioned, the quarter hour ratings are on the screen right there. As you can see, the show started off uh, AW Collision pretty steady in the first three quarter hours. It then led into three quarter hours, which were significantly below the trend of the last 90 days. The show did rebound for the Nick Wayne match and also the beginning of Brian Danielson and FTR versus Lance Archer and The Righteous and then remained fairly steady heading into the beginning of AW Rampage, which began with Kyle O'Reilly versus Lee Moriarty. The show then generally followed the trend that we have seen in the last few weeks. The trend was largely the same pattern as the total viewership in the 18 to 49 demographic as well. So what do you make of the ratings for AEW Collision and Rampage this week? Is this good news for AEW as we head here into the summer? What do you think is going to happen with Collision and Rampage? How would you change AEW Rampage? Would you move it to have a permanent third hour on Saturday nights or would that be overkill? Let me know your thoughts about it in the comments section below. Now a big change and development when it comes to AEW All out this year because an AEW mainstay is moving off the holiday weekend. Now, this was first reported by Fightful Select's Sean Ross Sapp. He had learned that AEW plans to imminently announce they'll be moving this year's AEW All Out off of Labor Day weekend. Now, the event will still take place in Chicago, but will be Saturday, September 7th from the previous date of September 1st. Now, AEW sources that Fightful spoke to confirmed that they moved the show due to fan concerns about all in and all out being too close together. As a result, the show moves from Sunday to Saturday just before the NFL season kicks off. In addition, Fightful have been told that AEW Collision and Rampage will film on Friday, September 6 in the Chicago area. AEW All Out has been on Labor Day weekend since its inception in 2019. The show will air on pay-per-view from the Now Arena in Hoffman Estates, Illinois, just outside of Chicago. Now, ticket information should be announced soon as well. Um, after Very shortly after Fightful's reporting, or All Elite Wrestling did actually confirm this as well with a post on social media, Media and a very short statement that reads as follows. They said, quote, The AW All Out pay-per-view event at the Now Arena in Hoffman Estates, Illinois 
originally announced for Sunday, September 1st, has been moved to Saturday, September 7. Ticket information for AEW All Out will be announced in the coming weeks. we get any more details on that, we'll let you know. But do you think this is a good move? Do you think it's the right move? Let me know your reaction to that as well. Now, some unsavory news when it comes to Julia, a rumored WWE signing, because she seemingly has suffered an injury. Marigold, the promotion founded by Rossi Agawa after his exit from stardom, has announced that reported WWE bound star Julia will be out of action indefinitely after suffering a fractured wrist during its inaugural show. She was in a tag team match in a losing effort against Suri, formerly Suri in NXT, and Brazilla in the main event of Mary Gold's Fields Forever event on Monday. It was just her second match since leaving stardom at the end of March, having wrestled for Noah earlier this month, but Mary Gold took to social media to announce the injury she suffered. She will now miss Mary Gold's Hana Kimura Memorial Show on May 23. You can actually see the post right there on the screen it reads as follows julia's right wrist was injured in yesterday's inaugural match today her doctor examined her and diagnosed her with a fracture unfortunately she'll miss the hannah kimura show on 23rd and upcoming shows for the time being we apologize and thank you for understanding now no more details when it comes to the injury or how much more time the former stardom star reportedly agreed terms to join wwe after her current stint with marigold ended Julia appeared alongside Marigold founder Rossi Agawa and William Regal at NXT Stand and Deliver during WrestleMania weekend and was highlighted to the broadcast during the broadcast similar to how previous signings have been teased. The belief was she was going to wrap up her commitments with Rossi Agawa before reporting to the WWE Performance Center. As of this recording, it's unknown whether the injury spells the end of her run with Marigold or affects her reported WWE future. The situation resembles Mercedes Monet's injury last year, coming at a time when she was with Stardom in New Japan, but kept her out of action for the remainder of her contract. So we'll have to wait and uh, see indeed what happens with that. But one thing is quite interesting when it comes to this relationship with WWE and Rossi Agawa's new promotion, we could see some WWE stars make some appearances for him in the near future. Future. Now, Mary Goldfield Forever took place, as mentioned, on May 20, with Akira Tozawa, Io Sky, and Kairi Sane sending flowers to celebrate the promotion's debut show. With Mary Gold's Summer Destiny set for July 13, 2024, in Tokyo, Japan, Dave Mouts has reported details of the two stars who could be tapped for the upcoming show. Speaking on Wrestling Observer Radio, Mouts addressed the relationship between WWE and Mary Gold, saying, quote, Obviously, they want to get somebody from WWE as a big draw for this Sumo Hall show. The two would be Kairi Sane and Io Sky, one or the other. Asuka hates Rossi Agawa, so there's no chance of that one happening. Well, very little chance. But it'll be interesting to see if WWE allows its talent to work, considering they're supposed to be working together. The four big shows a year, this being the first one, those are the ones they want. If any WWE talent is on, it'd be a one-shot big show thing. So we'll have to wait and see if we get any more confirmation on a WWE star being on a Marigold show in the future. And when it comes to WWE's plans in Japan, they've actually got quite some big ones later on this year. WWE has announced three shows for this summer in Japan, marking a return to the country for the first time in five years. The three shows take place on July 25 at Edeon Arena, Osaka, followed by July 26 and 27 in Kurokan in Tokyo. Now, among the stars advertised to be performing on the Japanese tour are Cody Rhodes, Shinsuke Nakamura, Drew McIntyre, Bobby Lashley, Io Sky, Asuka and Kyrie Sane. WWE released the following press release today saying, quote, WWE part of TKO Group Holdings today announced a long way to return to Japan with three live shows this July. The first show will take place at the Idion Arena in Osaka on Thursday, July 25. WWE superstars will then return to perform in Tokyo for the first time since 2019 with back-to-back -back shows at Rakugu Arena on Friday, July 26 and Saturday, July 27. These events will mark WWE's first return to Tokyo in five years and the first return to Osaka in six years. WWE has a rich history of live events in Japan dating back to 1994. Fans attending the WWE Super Show Summer Tour will see their favorite WWE superstars in action, including the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes, Shinsuke Nakamura, Drew McIntyre, Bobby Lashley, Io Sky, the Kabuki Warriors, and many more. We get more details on that, of course, we'll let you know in the future. Now, I spoke about Cody Rhodes there, of course. He's got this upcoming title defense against Logan Paul this weekend at WWE Queen and King of the Ring, PLE. But was it ever considered that it was going to be title for title? Now, Cody Rhodes and Logan Paul teased a title versus title match 
future WWE King and Queen of the Ring. However, Paul refused to put his United States Championship on the line during a contract signing on the May 17 edition of SmackDown. This led to some confusion about whether there were actually plans to ever do the match that was originally suggested, but it wasn't on the cards from the outset. According to Dave Meltzer of Wrestling Observer Radio, the title versus title extravaganza was teased so Paul could backtrack and get heat going into the bout. The United States champion made it clear that they will only be competing for Rhodes' undisputed WWE Championship, even going as far to threaten legal action. During the initial tease, Rhodes made it clear that he wants to win the United States Championship and become a Grand Slam champion. However, unless plans change on this week's SmackDown and a title versus title match is made at the last minute, he'll have to bide his time for that dream to come to fruition. Regardless of the match stipulation, Rhodes and Paul will face each other in Saudi Arabia this weekend. Elsewhere on the card, Gunther will compete against the winner of the SmackDown bracket of the King of the Ring in the King of the Ring final, while Lyra Valkyrie will take on Nia Jax or Bianca Belair to crown a queen. Sami Zayn will defend the Intercontinental Championship against Chad Gable and Bronson Reed, whereas Liv Morgan will challenge Becky Lynch for the Women's World Championship. But there you go, guys. Latest pro wrestling news for you. Be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe bottom right-hand corner. As always, let me know your thoughts and comments comment section below and I'll speak to you again very very soon. Hey guys thank you for watching, listening, streaming or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video or click the bottom there to subscribe or the bottom right hand corner. Thank you very much and I'll speak to you again very soon.